Speedy Gonzalez is an iconic character and it seems he's made his way into Mexican restaurant menus because you can find his name under the lunch or dinner special, which is a combination of an enchilada, taco, your choice of rice or beans. I gotta say, it looks delicious, but I know, I know for sure we can make it better. Let's get started. First, we need to prep the filling for the enchilada. That way we can set it aside, forget about it until we need it. Dice half of a medium white onion. I don't know if I can make this recipe as fast as Speedy Gonzalez makes pizza, but I'm sure we can give him a run for his money. Take 10 ounces of queso fresco and just crumble it. So we can't make a dish that has Speedy Gonzalez in it and not add cheese, it's a must. He's a cheese lover. Absolutely. Add the onion right into the cheese. And you can add as much as you like. This is just a standard amount. Now mix it because you want everything to be evenly distributed. So every bite you take, you get a nice chunk of onion and cheese. I'd say if you're a cheese lover and you really want to pack those enchiladas with the filling, double this mix right here. Cover it with plastic wrap and just place it in the fridge until we need it. Enchiladas get their name from being covered in a chili sauce. To make it, we're gonna be using eight guajillos and two ancho chili peppers. All you have to do is remove the seeds, stem, and veins. Now let's head over to the stove. I am heating up three cups of low sodium chicken broth and I just want it to reach a gentle simmer. Meanwhile, let's toast those peppers over medium heat. Turn them as needed because the last thing we want is to burn them. They turn really, really bitter and that's not a flavor we want in our enchiladas. The release of those aromas are a great indicator that they're ready, plus they're also gonna feel hot to the touch. Take them over to the sink, rinse and drain them. The broth is simmering. If you need to cut the pepper so they fit comfortably in the pot, this is the time to do so. If your pot is big enough, just add them in there. Submerge them in, turn off the heat, and keep them covered. Allow them to hydrate until they are completely soft. Earlier I cooked one pound of russet potatoes. I simply cut them into small pieces and left the skin on for that extra fiber content. Now if you want to peel them, you can do so as well. Transfer them into a medium pot. Cover them with water until the water line is about one inch over the potatoes. Bring them to a boil over medium high heat then add a generous amount of salt. Turn the heat down to medium low, that way they reach a gentle simmer and just let them cook until they are tender and you can easily insert a fork into them. Finally drain and set them aside until we need them. Now let's make the filling for the tacos and we're gonna go with the traditional chorizo with potatoes. Heat a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and cook one pound of pork chorizo over medium high heat. Break it apart. Nelson and I have been talking about foods that we grew up with and I have to say pork chorizo is the one that I crave. This is three quarters of the way cooked and I've been stirring occasionally. Lower the heat to medium and add in half of a medium white onion that's been diced. This is fully cooked, the onions have slightly softened. Lower to medium low heat and add the cooked potatoes. For my favorite parts, mash them down. By doing this, we are also fully incorporating the potatoes with the chorizo. Mix in one cup of crumbled queso fresco and salt to taste. I'll just do a pinch. One of the things that I love about chorizo is the fact that it's already seasoned. It has spices, garlic. We don't really have to do much. It's a lifesaver. The flavor is amazing. The entire mixture is nice and hot. Turn off the heat and just set it aside. Heat 18 corn tortillas just until they are hot and pliable. Don't get them too crispy. It'll just take a few seconds. This one's ready. To fill the tacos, place a napkin on top of your hand because the tortillas are still hot. Add a good portion of that filling right in the center. Fold in half, kind of like a half moon shape, and press to spread that filling. A recap, just take the tortilla, add the filling to the center, fold in half, and spread that filling. Keep them covered with a kitchen towel and set them aside. We'll come back to them shortly. 
All right, let's finish up this enchilada sauce. Into the blender, add all of the hydrated chilies and the broth. To this, add two garlic cloves, one teaspoon of Mexican dry oregano, half a teaspoon of black peppercorns, and a quarter teaspoon of whole cumin. Cover and blend until this is completely broken down and smooth. My blender did a wonderful job, but I'm still going to strain it to get it extra smooth. You may need to do it in batches and use a spoon to get the sauce through the strainer. Now add half a cup of the chicken broth straight into the blender, swirl it around to get the last bit of sauce and strain it. This is what it should look like. It's smooth, it has body, but it still runs beautifully. You don't want something that looks like a paste. Now, if yours does happen to look a little bit thicker than this, you can always add more broth or even water until you get it to the right consistency. Lastly, add salt to taste. I'm gonna be doing two and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. This is what's going to give our enchiladas all of its flavor, so make sure it has enough salt. Set the sauce to the side, we're gonna need it momentarily. Set up a large pan with about one inch of a good frying oil and allow it to reach a safe pan frying temperature, then fry those tacos. These are almost there, just flip them as needed so that they get an even golden brown color on both sides. Once crispy, remove them from the oil. Place them over some kitchen paper towels and as soon as you can handle them, try to slightly open them so that we can do the filling. I like to do this now because they can get really crunchy after they've cooled a lot more, so I don't wanna break them. Now let's make the enchiladas. The sauce is done, so start by heating a couple of tablespoons of oil and I'll be using a smooth olive one. Once hot, dip the corn tortilla into the sauce. See how it coats it? That's exactly what you want. Now pan fry for a few seconds on each side. Once hot and flexible, Remove from the heat. Here's a tip, stale tortillas work best for enchiladas. I do keep them cold up until needed and make sure the pan has enough oil while cooking them. Now add the cheese and onion mix to the center. Carefully roll and continue making the rest. By the way, feel free to cook more than one at a time. Enchiladas is a staple in Mexican cuisine. The flavors are unique and each region in Mexico has adapted their recipe to what's available. I'm from a small town where women make a living by selling enchiladas at night. The same aroma that fills every street in my hometown will fill every corner of your kitchen. That's the magic of cooking. To serve, add some Mexican rice or refried beans to the center of the plate. I've made specific videos for these recipes. Feel free to check them out. Place two tacos on one side and two enchiladas on the other. Top the tacos with shredded iceberg lettuce. Some of the cheese and onion mix we used for the enchilada filling. Oh, in a delicious salsa verde or green salsa. I'll link the recipe down in the description area. Drizzle some Mexican style cream over the enchiladas or you can do sour cream as well. And finally top with chopped cilantro. Ooh, I can't wait, enjoy. Oh wow. <laughs> that was fast. Incredible, so good. I wanna start with the taco because, uh, oh my enchilada. goodness. It's calling my name. Ooh. I love enchiladas. Mm. Mm. We took a dish and literally put so much love and Mexican flavor into it. I mean, wow. Mm. When you go to restaurants and you see this recipe, you're gonna think about us. If you make it at home, you're probably never going to order it mm. at a restaurant. You're just gonna wanna make it at home because it's so much better. The full printable recipe is gonna be available on villacocina.com. It is just convenience at your fingertips. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. All right, so excited. <laughs> Until the <laughs> next one, bye.